it's really my pleasure to introduce uh, Arnaud Muller. Arnaud Muller, who is the team lead surveillance of antimicrobial use in the antimicrobial resistance division of the WHO in uh, Geneva, in Switzerland, where he's working since uh, 2016. Uh, he is currently leading the team on surveillance of antimicrobial use in the surveillance unit of this IMR division. And his role consists in developing standards related to surveillance of antimicrobial use, supporting countries developing their national surveillance system and managing the use component of the WHO global surveillance of antimicrobial resistance and use surveillance system, which is usually known as GLASS. Over the last 20 years, he has been involved in surveillance of antimicrobial use in humans and in animals, especially in Europe. And he has also a strong area of interest in IT systems for health and, and surveillance. And I have had the, the, the pleasure to, to meet several times with uh, Arno Muller when uh, I was working at, um, I was uh, uh, visiting WHO to set up the surveillance uh, system through cycle in which he was instrumental and uh, very efficient to set up the module on, on surveillance of uh, antimicrobial resistance, on, on antimicrobial use. So I think he's one of the best experts in the field right now. And uh, his uh, talk today will be, his talk today will be entitled COVID-19 COVID and antibiotic consumption. And I'm very pleased to leave the floor to him. Arnaud. Thank you, uh, Antoine. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Fondation Merieux and uh, University of Paris, Diderot, for uh, inviting me uh, to present on uh, surveillance of antimicrobial consumption and uh, so uh, okay. the um, impact of COVID. Then I, I will uh, start my presentation by, by showing a bit what we, we, how we approach the surveillance of antimicrobial consumption in WHO and during my second part of the, the presentation, uh, I will show you some, some examples of uh, how COVID-19 has impacted consumption of antimicrobials uh, over the last year. Um, just uh, to remind you that yes, uh, antimicrobial resistance is public health issues, a uh, very important issue from, from the virtual perspective. Uh, just to remind you that uh, antimicrobial resistance is a natural phenomenon and uh, that every time we have developed new antibiotics, uh, very quickly, uh, uh, microorganisms developed resistance against these uh, uh, antibiotics. And so when we talk about antimicrobial resistance, uh, we can think about it in a micro perspective, uh, focusing on patients, uh, looking at uh, morbidity of patient or mortality, and also cost for the patients uh, related to IMR. But we also think we should think so on IMR as a macro perspective in terms of uh, health services, what is the impact of antimicrobial resistance uh, for health services. Uh, for example, in terms of procedures, what the socioeconomic impact of IMR is in terms of society. And if we look at the main uh, factors contributing to the development of antimicrobial resistance, among uh, many of them, in fact, the most uh, important uh, factors driving development of antimicrobial resistance uh, is the use of or misuse of the use of antibiotics in humans and also in animals, as uh, uh, was also mentioned by uh, Ramanan in the previous uh, uh, lecture. And uh, of course, uh, in the virtual, um, having data on IMR, but also on antibiotic use uh, is very important and is part of the global action plan to fight IMR. And Basically, we have two objectives that relates to data. Uh, the first one is, uh, is really about getting data and uh, strengthening the knowledge and evidence uh, on IMR and AMU. 
And the subjective four, which is about optimizing the use of antimicrobial medicines, because without the data, it's very difficult to act uh, correctly uh, and optimize the use of antimicrobial and limit uh, impact on development of antimicrobial resistance. Um, and then that's important that uh, uh, for that uh, we have data country. Oops, sorry. Um, that uh, we are uh, called for as part of the, the global action plan. There was a call for countries to collect and report on antimicrobial use um, as well as antimicrobial resistance. Now, on the aspect of measuring the use of antimicrobials, uh, why do we need antimicrobial use and what can we do with that? Uh, first, we can understand volume of patterns of antimicrobial consumption. We can assess prescribing practices and appropriateness of use of antimicrobials. We can compare across local, national, international levels. Uh, we can detect trends over time. We can also do benchmarking. Then it's important to have this type of information for improving the situation uh, with respect of antimicrobial resistance. And uh, as the show, we, we decided to have a, a two-point approach for using the use of antimicrobials in countries. Basically, uh, one approach is what we call antimicrobial consumption, which um, is uh, aggregate statistics on, on uh, medicines used in a country or in a facility. Uh, this antimicrobial consumption uh, are targeted for routine surveillance. We aim uh, and we are supporting countries to, to set up routine surveillance system or programs in countries to, to collect antimicrobial consumption. Uh, in terms of uh, target for, for data, we are looking at data coming from manufacturers, importers, distributors, or these facilities. Uh, with this data, we can estimate uh, which antimicrobials are used in a country or a facility and how much uh, they are used. Uh, we aim also, at least at the national level, uh, with this type of data to get census data, which is really uh, representative at the country level. And as the very show, we are using a matrix for uh, reporting consumption, which is the, the defined daily dose. There are other uh, uh, metrics that can be used as so, and I will come back on that later. And as I said, for routine surveillance of antimicrobial consumption, we are targeting two levels in the countries, the national level, but also the, the facility level. And uh, as I said, this is routine surveillance programs. Every year, countries collecting this data for uh, their own purposes, but also as part of the global action plan and the GLASS system. On the other side, we have the antimicrobial use, uh, which are data, uh, actual use of antimicrobials per patients or users, because we have patients, prescriber, dispenser. This is uh, very difficult data to collect. And clearly, it's not something that can be done on a routine basis. You have to set up surveys just to be able to access the users, the patient prescribed at this point. Uh, but with this um, data, you can uh, have additional information compared to the consumption. More importantly, you have information about the user, about the uh, uh, type of treatments, about the indication for treatment, diagnostics, and things like that. Then, uh, with the data, you can understand how antimicrobials are used. Uh, as I said, it's uh, often doing through survey, then often it's sample data, sometimes uh, being difficult to be uh, representative at country level, at least to have, you, need, you will need large scale surveys. And uh, often here we don't use uh, uh, quantitative uh, metrics, but more like uh, relative uh, metrics, like proportion of patients on antibiotics and things like that. And uh, today I will not just focus on the antimicrobial consumption uh, on how uh, COVID-19 can, impact of COVID-19 can be measured uh, with antimicrobial consumption data. 
Uh, just to so, uh, put you in the context of the value chain of medicines, uh, you have all the steps from research development, going through uh, procurement, distribution, and then facilities, and then the patient with the use, and even uh, something that sometimes we forget is all the post-market surveillance with, with pharmacovigilance and substandard falsified medicines. And at every step in theory, we could collect data. Uh, as you see from regulations, we would have information on market authorization in poor manufacturers. Um, and at the level of distribution, we can have wholesalers, central medical stores, uh, donors as data provider. And then more we go uh, along the, the value chain, then we go with uh, facilities and finally uh, with patients. Then we can go in every, everywhere um, on the value chain. And as I said, more uh, further you go, better data you have, but more difficult to get. And in terms of consumption, uh, in fact, for the ease of the system, uh, we, we are looking at data from regulators, from procurement and supply and distributors, and sometimes from, from, from uh, the dispenser or the insurance system. Why we do that? Because often there is already some type of records on what has been imported in the country, what has been procured to a facility, uh, what has been distributed to, to a facility and uh, the facility level, what has been dispensed. Then in general, we already have record and it's in a way easy uh, to collect and we also can do it retrospectively. Then, uh, as I said, when we for the show, when we look at the macro consumption, we have to level the national level and facility level. The approach is very similar. The methodology is more or less the same. It's just that, of course, national level where we have data at country level, facility surveillance, we have data at facility level. Um, the target for the surveillance systems will be different. Uh, for national surveillance, uh, the targets of mostly national policies, regulations rational use and supply procurement at national level. Uh, whereas facility level, uh, it can impact national policies, but when uh, facility have their own policy, then they can uh, support their own policy. It will also uh, uh, facilitate the understanding and improvement of the procurement supply uh, for the facility. And so will uh, more, go more on the clinical aspect uh, with improving stewardship. Uh, in the facility. And you can see that the data providers different national uh, and uh, facility level. If we look at the methodology for surveillance of antimicrobial consumption, uh, just a summary, uh, what is important and we thought it was important is that it's not to pick up some antibiotics or some anti uh, antifungals uh, to go to all antimicrobial classes, because what we see is often we have a shift between uh, antibiotics uh, within a class or even sometimes between classes. And it's important to have an overall understanding of the dynamic uh, of all antimicrobial classes. Then, in fact, for the ritual programs, we uh, look at antibacterial, antifungals, antivirus, antimalaria, and uh, anti TB. Uh, medicines. Uh, so in terms of standardizations, we use the ETCDDD system, which is a system that is allowed to classify all uh, medical substances uh, and also define standard matrix for each of the substances. And you can get uh, more information on the uh, website of the collaborating Central Province Center uh, on drug statistics methodology uh, on, on the uh, uh, URL uh, on the screen. Now the difference is between country facility level. At country level, the idea is to collect annual data from public and private sectors and from the community hospital and care levels. If possible, not all, not all countries are able to, to disaggregate this, the data at this level. And as I said, data sources will be import manufacturing or sales distributors at facility. And in some cases, when they are present and uh, cover uh, a representative proportion of the population health insurance systems. At facility level, 
We also say minimum would be annual data, but uh, for the sake of stewardship or other activities uh, in the facilities, it's also important to go to quarterly or even monthly level uh, data. And that be collected at the whole level of the facility or by departments and wards, depending on the capacity of the facility to extract the data from, uh, from the, their data sources. And in terms of data sources, uh, we have one data source for the facility level surveillance, it is the hospital pharmacy. And uh, we are using procurement data or dispensing data. And when there are e prescribing system, then we can also use e prescribing systems. And in terms of consumption data, the methodology that we do is to list all, uh, uh, to have a list of all authorized antimicrobial medicines uh, and including detailed information. For example, the ATC code, which uniquely identifies the substance, the route of administration, the strengths of the package, and the package size. With this information, we are able to classify the medicines according to the ATC classification by route of administration. And then we can also, uh, we know the content of the substance uh, for each of these uh, products. And in addition to this data, which is uh, uh, unique every year, we ask uh, I mean, countries will collect the number of packages consumed. And as they consumed, depend on the data source. If you use import, then it will be imported uh, uh, packages. If it's distributors, it will be distributed uh, packages. If it's facility level data, it could be dispense uh, packages, but we just group and turn the consume uh, terms. And as I said, we we use the metrics defined daily dose, and every consumption is not expressed in grams or in units, but we use the defined daily dose. There's, there are other ways to, to look at consumption. There are other metrics. Uh, there, there are, for example, number of units uh, that could be used, for example, by AQVA. There's other metrics like, for example, uh, the days of therapies uh, or the number of prescriptions or, or number of dispensing that might be more difficult to get if you don't have electronic system at, at country level. Then in terms of, uh, of compromise, uh, the, the, the methodology we develop where is aimed to, to be uh, uh, practical in, in low and middle income countries. Uh, if you want more about the, the methodology we developed, uh, this is a list of the documents in terms of methodologies. Uh, as I said, we have methodologies for consumption on the left, other national hospital, but we also have a protocol for control survey that uh, we also uh, support uh, in, in countries. And finally, on the right, we, we have our first report, uh, initial report on antimicrobial consumption by, by WHO. And finally, just uh, as mentioned by, by Antoine Andremont, uh, in WHO we have a class, which is the Global Antimicrobial, Antimicrobial Resistance and Use Surveillance System, uh, the Colin Glass, uh, where we uh, collect uh, IMA and related information from countries. Uh, it started with uh, just IMA data, but now we have more module, we have routine data surveillance with IMR and uh, IMC antimicrobial consumption now. Uh, we have also some uh, project uh, focused surveillance like uh, emerging uh, antimicrobial resistance reporting, or also some surveillance targeting candidate species. And then we have surveys or studies like uh, enhanced canaria surveillance. We have also the tricycle uh, mentioned by Andremont about uh, ESB and E. coli in human and animals. We have also, as I said, compound surveys on antibiotic uh, use in, in hospitals. And also, more recently, also the, the glass methodology for estimating attributable mortality or, uh, of IMR botulinum infection. And uh, in terms of uh, IMC surveillance uh, in glass. Um, we, uh, this year, we, we have our first official uh, data call uh, on antimicrobial consumption starting, in fact, next week. And we expect countries to, to report to the show data on antimicrobial consumption for last year, but also as it's the first time 
previous year, we, we, we expect to have uh, data from, from 2016, 17, uh, 18, 19, um, in addition to 2020. We are also this year uh, rolling out the surveillance of the micro consumption in hospitals. And we, we also can currently carrying out uh, point blank surveys for antibiotics in hospitals in Africa, South America, and Middle East. Uh, basically, we are just starting data collection. Uh, then we don't have much yet the ratio data to, to show, but hopefully by the end of the year, we will have more information and also more information to assess the impact of COVID-19 uh, on, on the consumption of antimicrobials worldwide. But nevertheless, uh, there are many papers last, uh, and I've picked some examples of papers showing how uh, consumption of antibiotics have been impacted by COVID. And basically, uh, I, I try to split what's happening in hospitals, what's happening in, in, in the community. And uh, as mentioned by, by Hamanan, uh, yes, basically, uh, there has been an increase of use in hospitals uh, because COVID-19 patients have received uh, a lot of antibiotic treatments uh, as shown in, in, this, in, this, in these papers. Uh, you see that, for example, uh, at least uh, 82% percent of the patients received azithromycin in this hospital in, in Spain. Uh, and also more than half of them received ceftriaxone. And uh, if you look uh, on the left on this uh, work in, in 84 uh, hospitals in the US, uh, comparing data from 15 to, to 20, they, they saw uh, a regular decrease until uh, 2019. And last year, they uh, see uh, an increase of consumption uh, expressed in, in days of therapy per 1,000 days present in the hospital. And then clearly there has been an increase due to, to COVID-19 patients receiving more antibiotics. But on the other way, the same hospital, when they look at the overall uh, quantities of antibiotics used in the same 84 hospitals, um, what they realize is that uh, okay, over the last, uh, from 15 to 19, there have been a drop, but there have been another drop, increased drop, uh, if we compare 2020 and 29. Then on one side, the patients, COVID-19 patients increased the consumption, but the overall consumption of the hospital decreased, which means something else is happening in the hospital. Um, Another uh, data from, from Italian hospital where, where they look at the consumption and a lot of paper are from the first part of the, um, of the uh, uh, pandemic, which means spring uh, 2020. Uh, but basically what they saw is that uh, they, at the first uh, time, um, initial um, part of the pandemic, there have been increase of use. But very quickly in this hospital, for example, the, the consumption drop to, to get back to the normal. We don't have more data for this hospital, but it seems that we have uh, this biphasic. Some other hospitals also reported that, that initially high consumption, but then because of changing patient care management uh, or maybe pathologies uh, drop in, in, the, in the use of antibiotics and maybe coming almost back to, to normal, then not clear exactly what the picture in the hospital. And as I mentioned for the other, the US hospitals, uh, there have been an overall decrease uh, of the consumption for this hospital if you don't report to, to, to the patients. And maybe one of the explanation would be that there has been uh, an issue on uh, access. People didn't go to the hospital, that may explain why. Uh, in total, the consumption decreased for, for, for these uh, uh, hospitals. Then there's not clear a uh, picture in the, in the hospital. In the primary care, uh, we can also detect change uh, due to COVID. And on the left, you can see this data from a region in Italy. And again, focusing on the initial uh, part of the, of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, comparing March, April, May with previous data, and you can see that uh, there have been a decrease in the community 
uh, in terms of use of antibiotics. On the right, some data that have been provided by one country that used the duration methodology is part of the duration methodology on antimicrobial consumption at national level. This is data at national level, unfortunately not able to uh, disaggregate between hospital and uh, community levels. But interestingly, we can see that the, the, the penicillins with extended spectrum, which is amoxicillin basically, uh, drop from eight uh, DDD patterns per day to three, and half decrease. I mean, the, the consumption of this antibiotic, which is the main antibiotic given in community, has been decreased by uh, by fifty percent uh, during the twenty twenty uh, COVID nineteen period. Uh, for the cephalosporins, and, and no no major change for amoxicillin and in, in association with uh, uh, carbonic acid. Uh, for cephalosporins, overall, no change, but we have seen a decrease of first generation uh, and an increase of third generation cephalosporin, knowing that there might be more hospital use, but we can't really uh, separate that. There have been also a bit uh, small increase, but still uh, almost 50% uh, use in microlines and others. Then you can see that we have a, a change in patterns of consumption in this country. Another interesting and just uh, recently published yesterday, uh, just updated because I had all data, but this is a work done in France where they look at the impact of lockdown and the consumption of antibiotics in the community. In red, you have the consumption in, in 2020, the, the dash line with the expected uh, data. You can see that that new drop during the lockdown but even after the lockdown, again, when the new lockdown arrived at the end of last year, uh, a new, new drop. And again, this year, uh, maybe not a drop, but at least a, a stable uh, consumption where we should have expected a, uh, an increase. Uh, on the left, you have the total population. And on the, on the right, we see also children with uh, even highest, uh, higher uh, differences uh, between observed and expected level of consumption in community. Uh, basically, uh, it was a 29-25 decrease in France in terms of uh, dispensation of antibiotics in the community in 2020 and 2021, with an increase, uh, an, an bigger decrease among children between 0 and 18. And the reason given by, by the authors is uh, the isolation of people, which means that they didn't access their services either because they couldn't or they didn't want to access. And for children, some reason for the high uh, impact was, for example, children didn't go to school. They were not, no daycare centers open during the lockdown. I would explain that. Basically, they, they mentioned lower circulation infectious disease among the population, especially uh, children. Then the impact, we have two direct impacts in terms of COVID-19 patient management, and it's mostly in the hospital. And there have been an increase, but it's not clear. Uh, uh, what exactly the impact on, on, on the DQs uh, in the hospitals, we have to, to get more data. We couldn't check exactly in terms of appropriateness if, if this was appropriate or not. And then the indirect impact with the systemic impact of COVID-19 on society with lower access to health service uh, because of the descriptions or fear that people will be contaminated and doesn't want to go to, to see their GP or go to the hospital. Maybe also access to medicines in some time part, there was also uh, a shortage of medicines that will be also impacting the consumption. And on the epidemic aspect, uh, probably uh, the lockdown uh, had lower circulation infectious disease. We have also heard from some African country that the lockdown also limited the access of uh, illegal, uh, the entry of illegal medicines for the black market and seeing that black market had issues also to, 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 to get uh, uh, medicines uh, through the black market in some African countries. And in conclusion, um, also it, the measuring the use of antibiotics is very challenging, mostly due to the level of resources. We try to, to, to develop methodologies that are applicable in low income uh, con countries. Uh, there's definitely needs for multi-tool approach. We just talked about consumption, but uh, getting data on the use with COVID would be very important. 
uh, routine surveillance at their national level, facility level allows to detect change in patterns of use of antimicrobials and clearly COVID-19 impacted antimicrobial use differently in hospital in the community. Uh, but we still need more uh, longer data sets. We have a lot of publication from the first part of the pandemic. We need to get the, the remaining part of the pandemic when, when uh, access would be easier to, again, do we go back to normal or not? And we also, as someone mentioned, I think we need additional work to understand the lasting effect of this change due to COVID-19 on the development of antimicrobial resistance. Thank you uh, for your attention. <laughs>